So this is a video that I have been asked about a hundred times. Pretty much everyone you talk to when you've built a boat, you know, they, they want to know what it costs. And I intentionally haven't made this video for a long time. Not really for any reason in particular, I guess. I just, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go there. I've made a video. Um, I've done a thing. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I'll get back on track. So I've made the video, um, I haven't got an exact list, but I've got basically everything that was a part of the build and everything that cost and I've put into a spreadsheet. I've pretty much had this spreadsheet running since we were building the boat. I think it was before we were building the boat I started this. So I'm just going to share that today. I'm just going to share my screen with the computer and just jump between the two. Welcome to technology. Let's just get straight into it, hey? So... The trailer. The trailer was the first um, initial thing. We built the trailer before the boat was ready. And you can see the costs here for the trailer. So $5,000 for running gear. So that was just, you know, the brakes, the axles, the wheels, the tires, the breakaway unit, um, the smart IQ, brake controller thingy, all that kind of stuff. So there was five grand in that. Consumables. So this was... Not just gas and wire, but this is things like the polyurethane um, strips that the boat runs on, like the slides that the boat slides on. That stuff is worth a fortune. Hey, that stuff was so much dearer than I expected. So there's there's that, there's that part of it. And then the other one is just aluminium. So that's things like, um, essentially the trailer. The trailer's built of aluminium. Aluminium. So you can see there, 10 grand, 10 grand is the initial cost of um, the trailer, I suppose, and what it cost us to build the trailer. Moving on to the hull. So every boat's obviously going to be different. Every manufacturer is going to be different. So I can only go through what's specific for me, but the hull that we bought was $25,000. So that's $25,000 essentially for, you know, an eight or nine meter long pallet with you know, that thick of aluminium on it and everything that you need to construct the boat, you know, material-wise. So, fuel tank and everything, just flat sheets. Um, there was pipe in there for the breathers, there was pipe in there for some of the handrails, all that kind of stuff, all in there ready to go. In addition to that, additional aluminium, we spent another $300. So that $300 was to buy things like the pipe that we used to make the bollards because we built our bollards from scratch. It was to buy the round bar that we used in them pipes. We bought some more pipe for handrails. You get the idea, you know. I think we bought a sheet as well to do some other bits and pieces with a few of the hatches and some stuff like that. So, consumables. So, 10 grand is going to seem like a huge number and most people are going to laugh at that. But, to be honest, it, it's probably fairly accurate. It could even be... You know, it could even be more. Carbide cutting discs, cutting discs, grinding discs, you know, MIG, the nozzles for the for the MIG, you know, wire, gas. Um, it just, it adds up so quick. It adds up quicker than anyone would appreciate. It just will blow you away. Not just the rate of how quickly you go through these things, but the cost of these things. Phenomenal. By far the biggest I suppose, unexpected expense. So just be aware, consumables will will add up and they'll add up quick. Um, external work, so folding and stuff like that, that's getting, you know, say the back trends and boxes, you know, you, we needed to get them folded and you need to take them somewhere to get them done. Unless you've got a big folder or a big press or something that you can fold them in yourself. Don't try and do them at home over your bench. They do need to be pretty much spot on. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, you know. All your folds and your cuts need to be, you know, they need to be on the money. Uh, glass for the windows. So it's $1,500 for that. So that's the three bits of glass in the windscreen and the sliding windows on the side. Flooring. So with Revenge, we went the, the Raptor liner, that spray on, I suppose you call it tray liner. Super happy with that stuff, by the way, two years later. I haven't worn any of it through. I've put some okay scratches in it, but none of it's from wear and tear. Um, it's just from me 
dragon heavy things on it like lobster pots anyway i put 500 bucks aside for that if you just check a plate at it and didn't touch it you might get away with no cost if you wanted to get the crappiest carpet you could you might be able to do it for 150 bucks each to their own hatches 600 bucks that's a pretty real number eh um you know there's two hatches one for the battery bank one for the bait tank pumps and a few other things, you know, the deck wash and that. And then the two hatches on top, one for the live bait tank, one's just storage. Those four hatches, you know, even though they're, say, 100 bucks each, they add up very quickly. Then there's another three hatches in the transom where you can get to the bait tank pumps and a bit of stuff like that. So hatches expensive and, you know, you might have a few of them. Freight was $1,800. It cost us $1,800 to get that pallet from Queensland um, down to Rutherford where we built it. And then the one that I haven't got a number here for is the, the paint or wrap or whatever. If you're going to paint, you know, an 8 meter boat, obviously that's going to be a fairly substantial cost by the time you sand it and do all the prep work and, you know, shoot it and whatnot. Um, if you're going to wrap it, same story, you know, a wrap for a boat that big, you know, five plus grand um for most ones that i've seen i think it cost me five grand to wrap anticipation which is a bit smaller anyway so you can see the total cost for all of that stuff was forty thousand two hundred. so that's forty thousand two hundred. um essentially to get the the hull built and seaworthy um as you could call it Moving on, the engine. So every every person's going to have a different take on what brand they want to use, to be honest. Completely irrelevant. Whether you're going to buy brand new or second hand, that's totally personal preference. Only you will know the answer to this number. For me, that number, 46,000. Uh, that included the electric steering for the boat. So I do have electric steering so you can... Turn that 350 with one finger, it's so light, it's amazing, I love it, absolutely awesome. Same story with electronics, like only you're going to know what electronics you want in your boat. If it was up to me, I would have spent, you know, 20 grand on, um, on the CH Smith website and bought, you know, two Furuno um, TZ touches and that, but it, it just wasn't an option given all the other expenses I had at the time. I bought... Two units, second hand, off Gumtree. They are absolutely awesome. They cost me 3700 for the two of them. And with that, I have two units, Radar, Autopilot, AIS, and um, there's a through-hole transducer, and a through-hole transducer as well for that 3700 So it's a pretty awesome setup that I've got for what's reasonably, you know fair for electronics they, they do get dear that's one of those things but everyone's going to have their own take everyone's going to have their own spin on brand or what they want to do you might just be happy with you know one unit and a what whatever everyone each to their own this is arguably the most fun part and that's the fit out this is exciting this is where you get all the little bits and pieces and put everything together into what you call your boat so for me, I'm not going to go into why I've got these things. I'm just going to talk about what it is and the cost to give you as an idea. Okay, live bait tanks. I have two live bait tanks in Revenge. One is fed from a 700 gallon an hour pump. One is fed from a 1600 gallon an hour pump. I can cross between them or send them to one side, both tanks to one side or whatever. Anyway, $750 for them two pumps. Expensive, but worth it. I have a 2,000 gallon an hour pump below the deck hooked to a float switch, so that's $250. The 12 volt panel, so this is just your, your switch panels to turn everything on and off. Got $300 for that. Um, look, you could go and buy like a $70 on off, like whatever. But by the time you run wiring to it and earth it and do all that kind of stuff with it, it'll, it'll add up, you watch. Fuses, all that kind of stuff, it'll add up. 150 bucks for a compass any offshore boat needs a decent compass 
VHF radios. I got 750 bucks for VHF. VHF radios. God. Um, because I have two fully standalone units. So I have two separate VHFs, two separate power supplies, two separate aerials. You know, it's, it's just a peace of mind thing. One of them barely even gets turned on, but the day that I'm in a tournament and my radio stops working, I'm not going to have to drop out or expect someone to bring me a handheld. You could have a handheld as your second, whatever, each to their own. Isolator, 350 bucks. I do have one of the smart isolators that allows me to link the batteries and all that kind of stuff. Um, 350 bucks is a pretty fair number once you, you, know, you run wiring and all that kind of stuff. Anchor winch, 1300 bucks for the anchor winch that's still at um, Whitworth's getting repaired four months later. Thanks guys, great job. Underwater lights, this is not necessary at all, but 1700 bucks, underwater lights, worth it. They're cool. <laughs> um, deep cycle batteries, I have two deep cycle batteries, $540 for the two of them. $270 for a start battery, so you see there, there's like 800 bucks in batteries. Um, and then carpet, so the carpet for all inside the cab and the carpet for the, you know, the side gunnel pockets and all that kind of stuff was two and a half grand. You could probably do that cheaper, you could probably do that yourself. To be completely honest with you, looking at the job on my boat, I'm glad I didn't and I'm glad someone did it because they did an awesome job. I never would have done a job that good. So the cost for the fit out um, here is $9,460 for the fit out. So what that doesn't include, and I think this is one that, um, this, is, this is one that we need to be aware of. What that doesn't include is seats. Obviously Revenge doesn't have seats in it. Seat boxes are expensive, boat seats are expensive. You could probably easily add another thousand bucks to put seats in the boat, unless, you know, unless you wanted to really do it on the cheap and just have a pole with a crap seat. Each to their own, depends what you're after. Rego, inspections, all those kind of things, obviously doesn't include any of that, doesn't include safety gear, um, doesn't include any custom work or little bits and pieces that you want to do to, you know, make it yours and customise it. Doesn't include any work that you can't do yourself, with the exception of the, the folding. So there might be a few little, you know, tricky things. Like, for example, you might not be confident welding the fuel tank up. You might want someone to weld the fuel tank for you. Little bits and pieces like that you need to work out. The biggest thing, and this is by far the most important thing, I'll come closer for dramatic effect, is the labour. Everyone that I've spoken to would be like, oh, you'd save heaps of money doing it yourself. Most of those people don't appreciate actually how much work it is. It is phenomenal. If you, you think that a job's going to take you four hours, it will take you eight um, unless you've actually done it and seen it, I don't honestly think, or or something similar, you know, I don't honestly think you can appreciate just how much work goes into it. And I don't want to downplay that at all. I don't want people to, you know, think, if, if to save money is your main driver for why you want to do it yourself, unless you really have a good understanding of what you're getting yourself in for, that's a terrible reason. If you know what you're getting yourself in for and that's your reason, then, you know, go hard. But that, that's probably the biggest take out of it is, like, process-wise, I think most people would be able to get their head around it process-wise, but maybe not, like, workload-wise, if that makes sense. Like, it is a lot of work to get this done, hey? Anyway, not to discourage anyone, just, just be aware. It's not a little quick job. What we've all come in here to see so equals sum, and then we go up here, check out my dope Excel skills, we hit enter. 
109,360. That is fairly close ballpark to what it cost me to build Revenge. 109,360. Keeping in mind, I, I don't even want to imagine how many hours of labour went into building that boat or how much time went into building that boat. Um, that number, to the best of my knowledge, is fairly accurate, but, geez, like, yeah. The take out of it, if you think something's going to take you four hours, it will probably take eight. <laughs> Anyway, guys, look, I hope that's been some help. Um, I hope that's given everyone a bit of an idea on, you know, what it's all about. And as I said, these numbers will be different for everybody. Everyone's going to have a different take on it or want their boat set up, you know, somewhat differently or, or whatever it is. Does not matter. Everyone has their own spin on things. But this should give you a bit of a ballpark anyway, you know, what you're in for. And yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers for watching. I will see you on another video.